Hey guys, Tim for MVP Machine. In our last video, we showed the difference between machining cold rolled and hot rolled and how uh, removing a decent amount of material will affect the outside dimensions of the part. And the cold roll didn't fare too well, as expected. Um, there's a real problem with cold rolled when you're trying to hold accuracy and you take large chunks of material out of it. And in this video, we're going to discuss how you can possibly address that. So a few minutes ago, I drew the feature that I'm going to be cutting with a Sharpie in the spindle. And we're going to check with a indicator the surface of the part first then we're going to take that cut um, probably going to be in three cuts uh, rough to get rid of that chunk a semi finish and then we'll probably pull it out of the vise and check it after the semi finish and then we'll go back put it back in I've got a stop set up on the part we'll put it back in and do a finish and we'll see if we can't make a, a decent slot in this cold rolled steel that's six inches wide sorry six inches long by five and a half inches wide by three quarter inches thick so here's uh, the flatness I've got the indicator zeroed out and cold rolled is usually pretty good to about three to five thousandths on the flatness of a piece this size and it looks like we're a little bit off a little bit more than that but what we'll do we'll take that cut we'll put the indicator back in it after that cut and we'll see if that changed at all okay I'm going to be using a half inch carbide end mill to remove this this chunk out of the block and I'm leaving 35 thousandths all the way around we're going to be cutting at 6,000 RPMs and 120 inches a minute and going down approximately 35 thousandths um, on each pass. So here we go. Okay guys, that's the rough pass. Now I'm going to do a semi-finish and then we'll pull it out of the vise and uh, see if any of the dimensions change. Okay, here's our semi-finish pass. I've sl slowed down the feed rate to 80 inches per minute and we're going to be taking a quarter inch each time around. There it goes.
Okay, that was the semi-finish pass, and we still have 15 thou on the slot. Um, hang on a second, I'll pull it out of the vise, and we'll do some quick checks on it. Okay, we started out with a plate that was 5.5 inches, so I'll show you this side of it. And we're right at 5.5 inches on this side. Now we go over to the other side. And we are at 5.518. So we've got, let me make sure I'm on there good. So 18, 19 thousandths it grew in that area because we took out the slot. Now, the slot wasn't being influenced on the vise, so we should still have 15 thousandths on a three inch slot. And we don't, we've got three inches. Okay, now on the slot, um, I was supposed to leave 15 thousandths per side, but it appears that I've left um, one and a half thousandths because we're right on the number. So I just looked at my program and we're right there. Um, it's got a basically a thou and a half. Yeah, it's hard to do this on holding it out like this, but we're right there. So this is actually finished on the inside and um, now the the problem with it is A we've got to deal with the outside I'm going to throw it back in the vise real quick and we'll check the flatness on it okay it's back in the vise and I've got the indicator on it let's see how we did on flatness so we're not too bad that way It's moving around uh, between three and seven thousandths, but that's uh, that's not too bad because we didn't start out with uh, <clears throat> very good flatness on the plate. So now, how do we deal with the two sides being out of square to the slot? There's a couple of options, and uh, I'll show you one of them right now. Okay, I've got it set up in the other vise. I have uh, it standing up with some 246 blocks on the front and back to hold it. And I'm going to show you, I've got the indicator up on the inside of the slot. And basically what you have to do is tap that around because we want to keep the outside in relationship to that slot. So now we'll go to the top and I'll show you how far it's actually out. Okay, here's the top. We're touched off uh, towards the back, and you can see how far it's out approximately, approximately 10 to 12 thousandths over that length. So now I'm going to show you how I address that. Okay, I've got the Suburban Tool fly cutter with a seven and a half inch bar cut off and uh, set up in the spindle. And I've touched it off at the low spot um, towards this side of the edge of the plate. And I stayed at that number, it just left a, a little witness mark. So now I'm just gonna manly, manually run it across the part. Four inches a minute and 750 RPMs. it in and now we should be parallel 
to the slot that we picked up under here. So let me put the indicator back in and we'll check that. Okay, we've got the indicator set up and now I'll run it across the part. And we're within about a thou and a half. Um, didn't take much of a cut on that. It was a pretty light cut and it didn't even cut at all down here. So now I'll put it on the inside of the slot just to show you we're square to it. And here we are on the inside of the slot. So we're nice and square to that. So basically if you want to use cold rolled as opposed to hot rolled where you wouldn't have this issue. Um, sometimes hot rolled will spring. It depends on if you uh, if you debark it or remove the mill scale first. It'll spring a little bit uh, if you leave the mill scale on it. But nowhere near what this did. And basically what I'll have to do if I wanted to use this plate. Um, I would have to flip it over and cut the other side. And uh, that's the extra couple of steps you have to do. Just leave a lot of stock on your your features um, and creep up on them with finish cuts and then uh, you will have to cut the outside. So there's a couple of other possibilities um, and I've got another plate and I'll get that set up in the other vise and uh, see how that goes. Okay guys, I've got the second plate set up in the machine and been suggested by another YouTuber that the scale or the crust on the surface of the cold roll is what's causing uh, the distortions and as soon as you break through the scale um, <clears throat> that's when it opens up the, the material so my thought is if we take off that uh, surface layer we're going to be taking about 11 thousandths of an inch off um, with a fly cutter and then I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side and then cut the slot and we'll see what effect that has on the slot and if it still opens up like it did on the other plate. So here we go with the fly cutter. We're going to be running at 680 RPMs and about 5 inches a minute taking an 11 thousandths cut and the bar, it's a 7.5 inch bar, it's set to a cut diameter of 8 and 5 eighths inches. So here we go. Okay, we know this side is going to be flat, but as soon as I release the vise, that might change. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to throw the indicator in it, and if it does change, I'll show you guys. If not, I'm going to flip it over to the other side and cut that side real quick, and we'll do the slot and see what happens. Okay, we're on the other side taking the same cut, um, 11 thousandths of an inch, and after this, uh, we're going to check, I guess, this side for flatness, then take that slot out of there and see how it goes. Okay, let's throw the indicator in it and see how flat we are. Should be fine. Okay, there was a small amount of just a little bit of fuzz sticking up, so I just hit it with some scotch Brite, um, and we are looking pretty good here. Looks like we're dead flat. 
all the way around so we're going to cut that slot and see if that uh, changes the way the piece with the, the crust still on it um, did so hang on I'll get this set up we'll go from there okay here goes the slot same as before I'm running with My camera battery died just as I was finishing this video up, but I did finish up the part and I did check it to compare it to the first part and uh, exact same results. We were still um, way over on the outside of the part and the slot was still good. So uh, that did not work at all, skimming both sides of that. So that one's a myth. But there is one option that... Uh, that can be used in its cryogenic uh, treatment of the metal before you start cutting it and basically what it amounts to is uh, cooling the material with uh, nitrogen um, for approximately two days and then you slowly let it warm back up to room temperature and it aligns all the molecules um, and basically relieves the, the stress from the material so this is the equipment that they use now this is basically a, a nitrogen uh, cooled cryogenic um, treatment unit and it's computer controlled and it basically sprays a mist of nitrogen um, under your parts. Your parts go on that shelf in the middle and uh, it's a, a two day process and then basically just a room temperature uh, warm up after they take it out of this equipment. And I've used it, We've used, we use it on one of our products and it works excellent. So that is the ultimate solution, but you have to have some quantity usually. And there's a minimum fee and it's not, uh, it's not expensive, but it's not inexpensive if you're just trying to do a couple of parts. So here's what the treated, uh, untreated on the left and treated on the right parts look like. And... Basically, you get a tighter and more uniform alignment of the molecules, um, and that is what makes the part more stable. So, kind of the moral of the story is uh, use hot rolled and get it a little oversized and plan on uh, squaring the outside of it, and that's the inexpensive solution and uh, much more reliable and no extra operations. So thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next video and uh, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and also check out our t-shirts and our hoodies and if you wind up buying any of those it does help us out a little bit. So we'll see you next time.